We're going to go into God's word. I see that the parents are back. I see that the parents are back. Today, I have my keys in my pocket. Normally, when I enter the building, I put my keys down. I go and put it down because the keys are a bit heavy for me. I don't like carrying things on me. So every time I get the opportunity to let go some pressure or weight off my body, my, I, I leave my key. So I also have the habit of leaving it in places I can't find. Glory to God. Glory to God. You see, we, so Easter is coming, right? I mean, t next week will be Palm Sunday. Glory to God. Next week will be Palm Sunday. And then after Palm Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. That week is the week that we are fasting. So keep in mind, Sunday is Palm Sunday. After Palm Sunday, Wednesday, we are starting our conference. Three-day revival conference. Fast in the day and come. But we are entering into Easter. For me, Easter is so important to me. Every Christian celebration is important. But Easter is very dear. I have a personal thing about Easter. Because it reminds us of the, the, the life of Jesus. When I say the life of Jesus, the ending of his life. His life as in living on this earth as a man, as a human being, God on this earth, right? And then his, his death, the way he was murdered, he was killed. And then he was buried like every human being gets buried. Some people get cremated, but he was buried and he resurrected on the third day. And when he resurrected, he lived on this earth for 40 good days. That one people don't say. People think he resurrected and then he went to heaven and that was it. No. He lived on this earth. People saw him with their eyes. He lived with people. People witnessed for 40 good days before Jesus went back to heaven. This is all recorded in Bible. It's not made up stories. History records it. So the Bible is true. And in Easter... We, we remember this Jesus. We celebrate especially his sacrifice and his burial and his resurrection and ascension to heaven. Giving us hope that it is not over for the child of God. And so as we begin to remember this, as we begin to go into Easter remembering these things, it is important that we also begin to understand that Jesus did not, everybody knows. Why did Jesus came, come on this earth? Oh, Jesus came to die to re reconcile human beings to a relationship with God. That is the ultimate reason why Jesus came. But in his reconciliation, and you remember our, our Christmas, our, new, our 2022 theme in this church is take your place. The taking your place begins with a reconciliation with God, a relationship that is reconciled to God and accepting your place as a child of God and taking on your responsibilities as a child of God. Jesus is going to the Calvary cross. It's not just as being um, reconnected with God. Yes, it is, but also that he gives us keys he gives us spiritual keys that unlock god's purpose in the natural realm hallelujah say to somebody the natural realm you see what we are seeing here is human realm it's our natural realm what we can see what we can hear what we can touch what we can hug that is real That is real. But there is the spiritual. And Jesus gives us authority in that way. And so this morning, you see, while we understand that, if there is any situation facing you, that is almost, it looks like it's impossible for you. When you look at what is happening in Russia and Ukraine, 
when you look at what's happening around our world, inflation in prices and all sorts of challenges are going on now. Economic challenges, there's relational challenges, there's a lot of things going on now. Everything, anything facing you, whatever situation it is, right now, right now, by God's grace, Jesus has given you the power and the authority to overcome it as a child of God. The Bible has great news for you and I. You are not powerless. Say powerless. Say powerless. So, uh -uh, tell somebody, you are not powerless. You see, Putin might think he's sitting on nuclear bombs. USA might think they are sitting, our president, President Biden might think he's sitting on nuclear bomb. He has the nuclear codes. India might think it is sitting on power. Other nations around the world might think they have power to control affairs. And indeed, they go in their meetings and they discuss the future of tomorrow. There are organizations and demonic organizations who plot and plan about the future of human race. But none of their power is above what God has given to you and I. You carry power. So you are not helpless too. You are not powerless and you are not helpless. You might think, oh, I'm of Hispanic background. This country is racist. So there is no help for me. You might think, oh, I'm from African background. I'm black in this country. We are minority here. And there is nobody to help me. You might think that you, you, there might be situations that you are facing. Maybe an illness or a decision you need someone to come through for you. And there is no way out. And so you might think you are powerless or helpless, but there is help for you. Today, Jesus wants you to know he died so that you will have help. Yeah? You have heavenly keys of authority to enforce your father's purpose. God has a purpose concerning this earth. He has a purpose concerning your life. He has a purpose concerning Kearney. He has a purpose concerning your children. He has a purpose concerning the schools in this district. He has a purpose in all situations. And you have been placed in a position of enforcing God's purpose on earth. You remember what Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. The Father has a will. And that will will be done on earth. And he has placed you in the middle of it to be able to do this. Because Jesus died on the cross. Hallelujah. So today, what, what am I talking about? What is this man talking about that he's rambling, rambling, rambling? I brought my key. I'm speaking on the subject, keys to victory. Say, keys to victory. Hallelujah. Keys to victory. So I've done the introduction. Now let us go into more meat, okay? Let's look at kingdom keys. Yeah, the kingdom of God. The keys of kingdom of God. How it, it is representing your authority. Yeah, yeah. Take a moment. Think about my physical. I have my physical keys here. Can I see all of your keys? Who Take your key out. I want to see your key. Brother Mike, I know you have a key. Oh, you, she hasn't given you your key yet. Take it from her. Everybody, let me see your key. Let me see everybody's key in the house. Hallelujah. I want to see your key. I want to see your key in the house. I want you to do it. I want you to do it. I'm pleading with you. Take out your key and let me see your key in the house. Yeah? Let me see your key. Some people are still looking for their key. The key is under things. Heavy loaded. Hallelujah. But 
As you can wiggle and shake your key and I can hear the rumblings, thank you very much for taking out your key. I mean, when you look at your bunch of keys, I have my bunch of keys, right? And on my bunch of keys, I have the key to open this main door here. I have the key to open my office. I have the key to open some safes in the building. Oops, I shouldn't say that. I have, I have remote for opening my car. And guess what? When I, my car, when I get in, if I don't have this remote, forget trying to move it. Yeah? What does your keys allow you to do? You see, in trying to understand the subject of key, yeah, in trying to understand it, the key is your possession, yeah, it represents a right and privilege that you have. They enable you to enter through a doorway, yeah, into a secured area that Others cannot go through if you do not have the key. I remember back in the days, I used to go to Jimmy's workplace. We, we, I lived just a, about three blocks from her house, uh, from her workplace. And I didn't have active work that I was doing then. So sometimes when she's about to finish work, I will go and wait for her. When I get there, I'll just be sitting there. And then the staff, after a while, they realize that, oh, it's... So they, they called me, they would call me, and they would give me a pass, a, a pass card for the day. So when I go, I just swipe it over the thing, and then the remote doors open, and I walk in confidently. Keys work like that. They allow you into places, and they refuse you from entering into places. So if you do not have the legitimate key to open a certain door, you can never enter that door. And the word of God says that thief is he that comes through the window. The door. Legitimacy. And that is what authority means when you begin to talk about authority. Authority is a key that is given to you to be able to access places that you have been given legal rights to enter. And so if you do not have a legal right to enter somewhere, you can, that door can never open unto you if you don't have the key. In beginning to talk about authority and keys, that is the mindset I, I want you to have. And it is the mindset the Holy Spirit wants you to have. That you carry authority Jesus has given you and I authority. We have kingdom authority, heaven's authority to open or close a door, to enter into realms, to enter into situations, to create situations and open situations. Hallelujah. And so kingdom keys of authority and power. Let's look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 says, And the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This is Jesus speaking to the churches, seven churches. We'll be doing the letters very soon. These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the keys of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. You see, in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, keys are symbols of authority and power, which I have said already. Keys are a metaphor for spiritual authority, and the kingdom of God is the realm of God's rule. So when you, we say, let your kingdom come, we are saying, Lord God, let your realm of rule come on this earth. You see, so long as there is a child of God on this earth praying this prayer, Satan cannot advance. Satan cannot advance. 
So when we are using keys in Jesus' name, according to God's purpose, we have the weight of kingdom authority behind us. Hallelujah. Say, I have the weight of kingdom authority behind me. Hallelujah. When you begin to do anything according to God's word and in the name of Jesus, oh, the whole of heaven begins to back you. And so when we were here on Friday, praying in the name of Jesus for this town, for this community and everything, heaven was moving. You might not have seen with your eyes, but we were operating by the authority of the living God. So let's look at the source of your authority, okay? The source of your authority. When Jesus rose from the dead, he said this, Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Hallelujah. Jesus carries the authority. Jesus carries the authority. If you're looking for any form of authority, Philippians chapter 2 makes us understand that Jesus, when he came to this earth and he humbled himself and he died on the Calvary cross, he elevated, he was ex elevated to the most highest name ever. Put the scripture back for me. He was elevated to the most highest place ever. And so now Jesus dies and he comes and he proclaims, he says, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Hallelujah. Jesus carries that authority. So he is the ultimate source. Jesus has all authority. He is the ultimate key holder. He has the ultimate key holder. Our, our digital system over there has an ultimate master code to enter it. It is me. I have the master code. Nobody can go into the system and do things except I permit them and I tell them the code. It works the same way with Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate master code. You are trying to have any form of authority that is not empowered by Jesus is a fake authority. Say there is fake authority in this world. Amen. So, Revelations chapter 1 verse 17 to 18 says, And when I saw him, the man of God has seen something. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am, the, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive for forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Hallelujah. The keys has been given to Jesus. He alone has these keys. These keys are your right to. So Jesus, Jesus says that anyone, and so look at Matthew. Matthew 16, 19, it says, and Jesus speaking says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. And so Jesus says he will give you this key. He will give you and I this authority. So he is our source. But let's not get this twisted. You cannot operate by his authority if you are not aligned with him. You must first accept his deity as God. You must accept his, his work that he came to do on this earth as in coming to die to reconcile us with God. And you must admit that he is God's authentic salvation for us he is the messiah the savior 
And lastly, you must give him your heart totally. He says, when you do this, he will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Hallelujah. These keys are your right in any given moment to release God's power so that God's will is accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. God's will must be accomplished in Kearney. You can release this key in this town. God's will must be accomplished everywhere you go. In the schools where you teach, in the workplaces that you go, in the people that you converse with, in everything you do, you have the authority to release certain keys in the community. Certain situations can change. And in your marriage, you have the authority to change situations. In your home, you have the authority to change situations. So parents, pay attention to what you allow in the lives of your children. Pay attention to what you allow in your home. He says, whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You see, just as, just as it's useless when you lose your key, or when you have the key, like this key as I have it, and it's lying here, and if I forget about it, and don't use it to open a certain door, it's the same way it happens, even though we have been given so much authority by the Lord Jesus to control affairs on this earth, and in our communities and in situations, if we refuse to use these keys, meaning authority, what remains? Evil remains. If the child of God does not exhibit his God-given authority on the surface of this earth, Satan advances. That is serious to bear in mind. And so there are many Christians who are not being active, who are not operating in authority because they are not using their key. They are not using their God-given authority. We don't pray. We don't stand against evil. We don't do anything against evil. And so evil is advancing either in our own personal life or in our communities. Can you imagine? I mean, last Friday we were here to pray. We, there was a handful of people here, but I'm sure we did great damage, isn't it? We did great damage. But imagine if all of you were here praying. What will happen in this community? Can you imagine if all the churches in Kearney came together to pray? What would be happening in this town? You see, there, there is a lot of history that talks of how people of God came together to pray and God moved in towns, in cities, in nations because of prayer. They exercise their authority. And our authority is not only supposed to be exercised in prayer. There are certain situations we must be able to say no to. If your boss is saying, hey, you know, let's do it this way and then get away with it. I mean, the customer won't see. You're like, no, this is wrong. I'm not going to do it. And he can't fire you over that, you know. If he tries to fire you over that, obviously he might find some other excuse to fire you. But he can never tell you, this is why I'm firing you. And that's also why you, as a servant of God, must be integral and faithful to God. Because if they don't get you one way, they will look for another way. But if you're always faithful, God will speak for you. You won't give Satan a legal right. Yeah? So, it is important that children of God understand that we carry authority. We carry nuclear power. Your, your bedroom is the nuclear engineering system. Maybe your small closet that you pray in is the nuclear engineering system. It's bigger than the biggest submarine that carries nuclear bombs, you know. And you can sit in your bedroom and and be pressing stuff pew, 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 pew. in the name of Jesus. You'll be changing atmosphere. You'll be changing circumstances just by sitting in your sitting room. Amazing, right? 
So now, we are going to look at eight, eight, use, eight ways to use the key of the kingdom of heaven. Eight ways to use the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And I'm not going to spend too much time. Let's dig into it. Step one. First key. Keys of the kingdom are primarily held and used through your mouth. Through your mouth. Through your mouth. We use physical keys. Like I said, we use physical keys to open doors. In the same way, in the spirit realms, we use our words to open doors. Keys turn and doors are unlocked as we make this in the declarations and prophetic declarations. Our doors and, and prayers, our words and prayers in agreement with God's word releases power. Hallelujah. And so Proverbs chapter 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit there. I have preached on this, so I won't go too much on it. If you want to know more about the power of the tongue, go to our website. All the sermons that I preach are there. Or go to YouTube. You can type WHCC Media, and you can get all the sermons. Yeah? So one way of which you can exercise your God-given authority is through your words. So be mindful of that. The second one is key, use keys to enter doors or to enter doors or opportunities. Revelation chapter 3. Let's read Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. It says, I know your works. I know your works, Jesus speaking. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my, my name. He's saying that you, are not, you, you haven't even been faithful to me. <laughs> you have a little strength. You have not denied Jesus, and you have him in your life. The little you see, your little availability to God, your little commitment to God, your little sharing with God still makes you a powerful entity for the kingdom of darkness. The very little, the little pleasing you are to God is enough for God to use you mightily. I'm not here encouraging that do the minimum best. You must desire to do the utmost best. But if this God would would, would accomplish so much with you who is doing so little. How much more if you can really release yourself and allow him to carry you, right? You will achieve greater things. As a church, we will achieve greater things if we allow him. But he says that, I know your work. See, I have set before you an open door and an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. No one can shut this door. In the New Testament, Paul uses the imagery of open and closed doors to speak of opportunities to minister the gospel. An open door is a metaphor talking about breakthroughs that come through God's opportunities for us. And a closed door talks about resistance and, oppre and oppression and, and, and stopping of, of the kingdom of God concerning situations. And so when God has given us this authority, he promises or he, he tells us that we have what it takes to, to be able to open situations and to close situations. And when God allows that, nothing can stop it. So you can use your key to change the destiny of the whole town of Kearney. You can use the key to change your destiny as a family. You know, I come from a, my mom's side. It's a very poor background. 
And when I began to understand the things of the, of the gospel, when I began, that's why our theme this year is simple gospel. When you begin to understand the simplicity of the gospel and the authority you carry by Jesus going to die on the Calvary cross for you, you can change every situation. If God says this is for you, nah, that's it. God said it is for me, nothing else. Hey, people can put a stigma on you. People can say whatever about you. But if God says this, that is it. You have that authority. Once Jesus gives you that authority, you can go forward and achieve. And so you can change the destiny of your whole, your whole generation. You can change the destiny of your community. You can change the destiny of yourself, your own, you know, Satan. You know, when people are born, the demonic world also rise their purpose for them. But when you begin to understand your authority that Jesus has given you, you can begin to re erase all that's written by the blood of Jesus and walk into your God-given destiny. I have met somebody who had his PhD and couldn't find a job to do. Every job he went didn't accept him. And we began to pray with the brother. And the Lord began to talk and show us certain things in the spirit realms. And we began to deal with those things. And the brother got a very successful job. God is wonderful. God is wonderful. So you can open doors and you can shut doors by your, uh, your key. And the key represents authority. By the authority Jesus has given to you. We in this community, we can pray for crime rates to come down. We can stand by our authority and say, crime rates must fall in this town. Our police officers will have so much time that they can sit down and do other things. And also relax with time with their families. We can pray for our schools. And, and, and principals will begin to call for pastors to come and lead activities and issues in the church, uh, from the church in the, in the schools. It is possible. It is all down to exercising our God-given authority. That is why I love to call for prayer meetings. That is why I love to call for fasting moments and, and interceding and praying about situations. Prayer changes situations when we exhibit our authority because, hey, Jesus has given it to you already. If you don't use it, you are a useless Christian. Satan loves it that way. He wants it that way. So he will keep you busy. He will give you alternatives. He will give you reasons, excuses not to be at the church. Oh, it, it's, don't pray. When you yourself, you can sometimes wake up individually. Pastor didn't say we should fast and pray, but I want to fast and pray today. Then the moment you decided, oh, I'm going to fast and pray today, then suddenly something happens and you're like, oh, why should I even, let me break my fast. It is what he wants you to do. We can say no to addictions in our life. Pornography cannot come and call you to open your computer and press it if you allow it. What forms of addiction control you? If you allow it, it will remain with you. If you resist it, it will flee. You remember the source of your power is Jesus Christ. The source of your authority. And the word of God says, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will do what? He will flee. And so me, I don't take excuses. When people come and they begin to talk, oh, and Satan, let me do it. I'm like, excuse me, don't think I'm foolish. Because I'm sitting here understanding and bearing with you doesn't mean I don't think you want to do the thing and you are doing it. Let's not get it twisted. And I will tell you, I think you like what you're doing. Because, hey, me too, I could be controlled by certain addictions. And so let's look at the third one. Use the key, meaning authority, to permit or forbid. Look at Matthew 16, 19. I'm going to read the amplified version. I know you're going to have the NK, uh, NKJV on there. The amplified says, I will give you, this is Jesus speaking, 
Well, anytime Jesus is speaking, you got to pay attention. Yeah? I will give you the keys, authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be imp improper and unlawful on earth will be, will have, will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you lose, permit, declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. This is Jesus speaking, man. So what are you seeing that is not God's will or God's order in our world that you are allowing to remain with you? You have the authority to forbid. Jesus says, I'll give you this authority. If you allow this, it will stay. If you don't allow. And so that is why when you come to church, there are certain attitudes I don't entertain. You want to begin to do something. I'll tell you, my friend, I'm not having this with you. You can't, there is no negotiation on this. You might say, this guy is arrogant. He's proud or whatever. No, I am choosing a stand against a certain thing that is not godly. And I'm exercising my God-given authority. You must do the same in your life. You must do the same in your community. You must do the same in your children. You have the authority to allow or forbid certain situations from happening. God has set it up that way. Right from Genesis, he gave humans control over this earth. And he blessed them. And so when a human being says, this is not godly, I stand against racism, I stand against discrimination, I stand against gossip, I stand against hate of all kind, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to make this possible. It happens in the name of Jesus. There are certain people who have fought and have stood for certain rights for us. That is why we are seated here. They prayed about it and they fought it out. Some died even doing it. But today you and I can say we live in a democratic USA. Others fought it in prayer and with action. And you cannot allow evil to advance around you when you can see it. Even when you can't see it. One thing I pray when I'm praying. Lord, anything happening in the demonic world that I do not know of, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, take authority over it. So we must pray concerning our community. Hey, you see our vision here. It is really nicely put and well printed. We have our mission statement out there. We have transformation is here. If we are not praying it into being, forget it coming to pass. You want life saved? Saving a life, you are dealing with demons and you must operate. You must exercise your God-given authority over such situations. There might be an illness in your home or in your life. A doctor told you. I don't know. I don't know. But the doctor told me I have these things. You can choose to believe it or not. It's up to you. You can forbid it to be or you can allow it not to be. It's all you. So the fourth point. Use the keys to set captives free. Look at Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Hallelujah. The spirit, Jesus' is manifesto. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the, the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the, the, the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Amen. Amen. Those who are oppressed. And I'm speaking on use the key to set captives free. No power and no door that holds someone captive, whether physical or spiritual, can stand against the keys, meaning authorities of heaven. In 
in this context, when we say binding in, in spiritual warfare, binding refers to the authority we have to command a demonic influence to stop or to, to cease activation. I bind doesn't mean that you are roping the person with rope. No, 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 no. You are stopping what demonic entities are doing in a situation. And when you say, I lose, you are opening or releasing somebody from demonic encounter and oppression. And so, you, 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 there, there, there are situations, let me, let me come back. To it i don't want to talk too much i want scripture to speak yeah in the name of jesus yeah so look look at matthew chapter 16 verse 19 he said and i will give you keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is what Jesus says, I've given unto you. I will do that. Now look at Matthew 12, 29. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house so the idea here is that in all situation you have been given the authority you can bind and you can lose situations and the same way you can declare by the authority god has given to you for somebody to be released from captivity or imprisoned <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> you can pray for somebody to be released from captivity Maybe God, God has laid, you have your family members, your sisters, you know them. There are some of them who are not saved and they don't want anything to do with God. It's not time to be talking plenty. Every time you meet them, then you are bashing them with God's word. And it has almost become like it's offense. They, when they see you, this guy is going to disturb. Maybe they don't even come to some family gatherings because they want to avoid you. You must begin to bind the power that is in operation in that person's life. You must begin to exercise your God-given authority and stop talking. You'll be surprised one day the brother himself or the sister herself will call you and say, hey, guess what? I have given my life to Jesus. Isn't that awesome, right? And then you celebrate with them, oh, glory to God. And sometimes you don't even have to let people know you are praying. Sometimes people will be like, oh, I'm praying for you. It's good. But when there are certain dangerous prayers when you are doing, you don't even let the person know you are doing it. God bless you. God bless you. We can also lose a person from demonic bondage or sickness. So listen to Jesus. Jesus performed a healing and he got in trouble. Luke chapter 13 verse 16. And this is what he said. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whose, whose Satan has what? Bound. Think of it. For 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. Do you get it? So there are certain illnesses. It's not about, oh, God, heal this sister for us. Heal this brother for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, you spirit of whatever, you leave this sister in the name of Jesus. You must exercise your authority. I'm opening the doors to my sister's health. I'm opening the doors to my child's promotion. There are situations you must speak to in the name of Jesus to lose hold. And that is your key authority that you have. Satan can keep people bound under illnesses. Some of the body pains, issues, you go, doctors don't even know what it is. You know, I always, this is my, my thermometer. When doctors cannot find, when there is no scientific proof of a certain illness, you can be rest assured it's a demonic issue. So most of the time when people begin to tell me, 
there are situations, I ask them, so what are the doctors saying? Oh, I went for this scan. They didn't see anything. I went for that scan. I know where to change the matter. That's why I love to spend time praying. In the name of Jesus, Father, I commit this time to your hands. I pray her release. I pray her healing. In the name of Jesus, I break every bound, every demonic oppression, every demonic subjection, every demon, every sickness that has been inf inf uh, that has infected our sister. I pray her released in the name of Jesus. Then it won't be long. The sister will be well walking around. They don't even uh, remember or know what you have done for them. But you have exercised a spiritual authority. So most of the time when people tell me their breakthroughs, I just say, oh, glory to God. They don't need to know what I did for them. They don't need to know. So exercise it to release people from captivity. That is what Jesus came to do. Yeah? When I see Christians who enjoy themselves without thinking of others and the freedom Jesus will want for others, I know your salvation is not correct. Hey, I know it's online. Yes, let me repeat it. When people, when believers, so-called Christians, are so caught in themselves, and all they know is them, without the purpose of God for others, that means that person's salvation is very questionable. Because look at Jesus himself. He didn't come for himself. Even though he knew there was benefit in dying for us, that wasn't the thing. He, Greater love as no man than he that gave him himself his life for us. He laid down his life for us. And so my brothers and my sisters, stop being about me, 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 and be about what? God's agenda, God's agenda, God's agenda. And that is what is happening here. The woman is sick for 18 good years. And Jesus healed the man, the woman. Now she is in trouble. He is in trouble for healing on the Sabbath. Can you imagine this? And there are many believers like that. You can lose situations and bind situations. Hallelujah. The fifth point is this. Wow, I'm on the fifth point. <laughs> Use your, your kingdom keys in prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't need to say anything about this. You know where I'm going with this. God opens doors in answers to prayer. The apostle Paul asked the church to pray. Look at Colossians chapter 4 verse 3. So, celebrating Easter, you should be joyful and you should, you should rejoice and you should be joyful and begin to appreciate Jesus. These are all why we should appreciate Jesus and celebrate Easter. Remember his death and resurrection because what he has done for us is amazing. 4 verse 3 says, Meanwhile, so the Apostle Paul is speaking to the church. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mysteries of Christ for each for which I am also in chains. Hallelujah. Prayer. You remember the church were praying in Acts chapter 12. For Peter. Peter had been arrested and was in, in jail with John. And they prayed. What happened? What did the church do? 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 Hallelujah. They prayed. And while they were praying, there was an earthquake. Halabashanda. An angel was dispatched. And the angel went to lose Peter took all the chains off and said, walk out, go home. That is what God can do. That is what God can do. Prayer. You lose and you close in prayer. And so don't look at your community and complain. Don't look at Joe Biden and his decisions and complain. Yeah? Don't look at other people and complain about them. Talk about gang rate and all sorts of things in our community. You are so much caught in the news. Hey, the news is saying this. What are you doing? You have power and authority to change the situation. You must pray. 
When you are hearing the negative news, you are praying, Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, save us, help us, move in Putin's heart. How many of you are seriously praying that Putin will come to his senses and stop what he's doing? How many of you are praying that President Biden will operate in wisdom? How many of you are praying that NATO leaders will operate with wisdom? One mistake can take us all to world war. Some of our young ones will be going to war soon. I thank God I'm 40 at World War II. I'm out. <laughs> but it's serious. I don't want to lose some of you to war. I don't want that. Look at Brother Michael sitting there. Strong man then, before I realize he's dressing and going to battlefield. No. No. That's not what God wants. We, we, there is work for us to do. That is why we must pray. There is work for the kingdom of God to do. Yeah, We are the frontline military people. And we pray by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. We change situations. That's why I love to call for prayer meetings. That is why everything I say, let's pray. I'm not stupid. Look, and by God's grace, I know I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm not the most smartest person. But this one thing I know, if I pray, heaven will move. That is my authority. Hey, nobody brought me here and nobody can take me from here. God knows why he brought me to you. Some of you, the demons frustrating you, they need somebody like me to tell them to leave. And so God brought me all the way from wherever I'm from. And today I'm standing here speaking my riffraff English with you. It is for your benefit. It is for your benefit. Pray, child of God. Don't be lazy. You see, Satan will give you the best bed. Oh, we have a good bed at home. We have a very good bed at home. We, eh, I don't want to say things from my bedroom. But we have a very good bed. Our bed, you can, there's a position you can press. It will take you in that position. You won't feel like you're a human being. It's serious. Babe, what do they call that position? She's like, why are you telling the church about our bed? We have a, look, there are so many types of beds in this world. Very comfortable beds. Orthopedic bed, well, posture something bed. They have so many different names for them. Don't buy these things. Look, enjoy them if you can afford them. But don't buy these things and become lazy and comfortable enjoying these things. Yeah? Don't let them control you. Pray. Get up and pray. Don't lie in your bed. Oh, but you can lie here and pray. Hello, Satan wants you not to be serious. And before you realize, you can lie down and pray in the next 20 minutes. And then the demons will be like, yeah. Let's go and do what we have to do to him. My brothers and sisters, you must war in prayer. You must war in prayer. Radagatosh, Ikaba Hadiba, in the name of Jesus, I refuse this. In the name of Jesus, I call this into being. Don't walk by what people tell you, you know. The word of God says we walk by faith and not by sight. They can tell you something. I remember when our Joel wasn't even born. He was in the belly. They began to tell us all scary stuff. It's going to be autistic. And what we are saying in the name of Jesus. Where did this thing come from? Ratemi Kabaya. Rodimi Katoya. In the name of Jesus. I bind any autistic spirit that is seeking my son. In the name of Jesus. I reprove and I deprove. I, I, you, I tell you when I'm praying, I make English words up. I make age. I look for the most powerful word and I say it. Sometimes I don't even know what it means, where it's coming from, and I release it in the name of Jesus. Do havoc. Do havoc. Look, I have great respect for doctors. The things they study, the knowledge they have, me, I don't have it. I don't compare myself to them. Everybody stays in their lane. 
they should know where their lane is and I should know where my lane is. But when you go and sit down, don't, they tell you plenty of stuff. Then before, when you come out, you are shivering. Don't sit down for TV anchor people who don't know God. No godliness. They have decided what to come and tell you. Do you know how many good things God is doing in this world? It's only the negative they always want to tell you. Do you know how many people, how many testimonies are happening in Ukraine now? That you are not hearing about? So don't walk by what gay news people want to tell you. Don't walk by what ungodly news anchors want to tell you. Oh, and they went there and they saw this and they reported it. Don't follow propaganda. Be a man and a woman of God. Before Ukraine happened, Jesus had already told us this was going to happen. And he said, when you see these things, be ready for the time is near. So are you ready? Are you ready in your relationship with Jesus? Do you know now? Now I'm ready to go. You see, some, that, this is also why some of you are working in fear. You don't want to be sick so that you will die. You know you are not ready for heaven. You are afraid to die. Me, I don't fear to die, but I don't want to die now because I know the work God has for me that he brought me to Kani to do. I haven't started. Hey, don't think I'm here to fix sound systems, you know. No, 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 no. It is only supposed to make my voice sound better. La, la, during the distant night, uh, the worship night, the, the silky voices did their thing. Then I came to take the mic. I said, let us pray. Before I realized, some people were wearing their coats. They are walking out. This guy is crazy. I don't care. I don't care. But if you knew what you were calling in the spirit realms... You wouldn't have wore your jacket to go home. You know me, I, that, I choose when I do stuff, you know. I, I can, when people are here chatting and that, I can dress up and I can leave. But when I hear prayer beginning, uh, when I hear prayer beginning, hey, there is prayer meeting going on here. Ah, 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 ah. I must be there. There is Bible study going I must be there. So I don't have time for gossip. Waste time relationships. No. If it is not godly. You know, sometimes I'm even invited to some place and I go there and I realize what is happening there. I leave. And when I leave, I make up my mind. I'm not coming back again. It's a waste of time. Let's look at number six, yeah? Use your kingdom keys as your praise. Hallelujah. You remember Paul and Silas were praising God in the midnight hour, Acts chapter 16. And as they praised God, there was an earthquake. Authority. You see, when you praise, sometimes you don't need to even say anything. You know, when we were here, raw, raw. Some of you are being Americans, like, oh, what's all this raw, raw? Raw. And maybe you might be looking at something thinking, why is she roaring and that? Praise. Praise is a kingdom authority. When you praise God in the face of adversity, you are making a prophetic declaration that this thing is nothing. And if it is nothing, it cannot control the situa your, your circumstance. It cannot control. Hey, where I'm standing now, I'm very blessed. Hey, you can tell me I don't drive Mercedes. Hey, that is not how I measure success. You can tell me whatever. I don't live in a mansion. Hey, Chris Rock's house, I don't, no, 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 no. I don't have that. But I am a very successful person. You can tell me whatever you want to say. I'm successful. But what am I trying to tell you here? Paul and Silas praised God. And the prison doors shook. Earthquake. I bet you when they began, the, other, the word of God says, and they read it, Acts chapter 16. It's a big passage. That's why I've left it. But 
while I, the word of God says that while they were praising and worshiping and singing hymns to God, the other prisoners were listening. <laughs> and it wasn't long they had a testimony while they were praising God. Boo, 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 earthquake, prison doors broken. Aye, the, the prison officer came. He thought they had all escaped. He said, no, 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 no. Come and see them, all of them here. Prison officer feeding all these prisoners, taking care of them. Where do you see this happening? Your praise will bring testimonies, will change situations. Praise God in Kani. Don't walk through the car. Oh, oh, these people, they don't even worship God. So long as you are here worshiping, God will be here. Worship on behalf of this town. And that is what we did on the worship night. We worshiped on this town, on behalf of this town, prophetically. That God will move in this community. That hearts will begin to be opened unto God. And so when we were worshiping, I was praying, Lord, move in this town. Take authority in this town. Let your will be done in this town. Your praise is powerful. Your praise carry keys. You can open situations and shut situations. And these are things Satan knows, so he will not allow you to do it well. Yeah? You know, now we don't have excuse. We can't say, oh, we, we didn't hear the music well. We have a good sound system. <laughs> we have a good sound system, so now we can praise. Do you hear how Brother Sam sings these days? Like Michael W. Smith. He sounds so nice. Before, our sound system didn't allow that. So now we have no excuse to blame it on the sound system. You must worship. Now you must worship. When you come in, you have no excuse. God has put a new sound system for you. You must worship. If you don't worship, he says that he will call trees, he will call stones and fishes from the sea to worship him. You don't want that to happen, brother and sister. We will all be doomed if this happens. So praise him. Whether good news or bad news, praise him. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I exhort you. You know, sometimes there would even be tension between me and Jumi. Baby, I love you, okay? There will be tension. Maybe something, then she will say something. Then I'll begin to praise God. It diffuses the atmosphere. Oh, Lord, I praise you. I give you honor. I lift you up. I exhort you. That's it. The atmosphere has changed. Then before you realize, we are kissing and rubbing on each other. God is good. The Holy Ghost will change your atmosphere. Learn to praise. Praise God with everything you have. Your money is not yours. Your money is not yours. If he's giving it to you, it is for his kingdom. Everything God is giving you is for his kingdom. He will ask of you. Hey, you know, some of you, oh, you have so much giftings. So much. Don't, don't thank God and appreciate him that you have the giftings and you are not using it. You will be in serious trouble on the judgment day. Every time you are not using it, he's judging you. To him that little much is given, much is required. So we are comfortable in this democratic America with good sound systems, with all these screens. Some churches don't have what we have. And you are not worshiping God, right? You are not being fruitful for, for the kingdom of God. Huh. Brothers and sisters, we are being judged, I'm telling you. So it's time to rise up. It's time to take your place as a child of God and walk in your calling. Tell somebody, walk in your calling. Tell somebody else, walk in your calling. Hallelujah. So let's look at the point seven. Oh man, wow, 12 o'clock and I'm on point seven. We will leave soon. Use the name of Jesus, the master key. Hallelujah. How else should I explain this to you that you will not understand? The name of Jesus is the master key that unlocks doors and enables you to enter the realm of the miraculous. In that moment of ex exercising kingdom authority, you are you are Jesus' representative. You know, we are the ambassadors 
of Christ Jesus Christ uh, of Christ Jesus everywhere we go. So, you see, when when you watch movies, I don't know how it happens in the real life, but in movies, when an ambassador goes to, he will say, "The president wants this. The president wants this. The president wants this." In our case, Jesus wants this. Jesus wants this. Jesus wants this. It is his name that carries the authority. It is not your looks. It's not my look. You see, I'm look, I think I'm looking cool, right? It's not my look that carries the authority. It's not my silky voice. So those of you who, who are eating banana to get nice voices, it's not that that carries the authority. It is the name of Jesus. We've already talked about the source, right? The source of your authority. And now you must understand that the name of Jesus carries authority. And so when you are praying, I, I've been listening to a lot of you, and many Christians don't know how to pray. We don't know when to, to seal the prayer that we are praying. Many of us talk a lot. Oh God, that there will be this God, there will be this da ba 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 she ba ba oh then you are done. No, in the name of Jesus. The moment you say that, prrr, things happen. So in the name of Jesus, exercise that authority that you have in the name. The name carries the endorsement, the seal to enter into heaven and to also speak to demonic entities. That is why, oh, everybody likes saying it. Paul, I know. Peter, I, hey, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? The sons of Skiba were beaten. Six guys who were whipped and beaten, blood all over them, half naked, running for their life. They didn't believe in the name of Jesus. They were using the name without the authority. And so they met a demon that was, ah, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to deal with you guys. But you and I, we have yielded to Jesus. We are living for Jesus. Now we must use his name in all situations. Don't be afraid to use it wherever you go. You know, we have witches in our world who don't want you to say Jesus. There is evil in our world. Who, people, plenty of people don't. Now Jesus' name is it's a swear word. It's a curse word. The moment you say Jesus, people are like, uh, don't start me. No. Satan wants you to operate like that. Because when you mention Jesus, it deals with situations. I know of a story of a brother who took another brother to voodoo to go and kill the brother because the brother was, he was jealous because the brother was succeeding in life and he wasn't succeeding. And they were brothers and his younger brother was being lifted up and he wasn't being lifted up so he decided to go and do voodoo against the brother and kill the brother and his life human beings are wicked so he went to the voodoo place and the voodoo the voodoo man asked him to bring certain things of his brother and they put it in a pot and they were stirring it and the voodoo man began his incantations as the voodoo man began his incantations, the pot began to have his brother's image and he was given a knife to pierce the brother and that would be the end of the brother. But in real life situation, his brother was also praying. And so when at that moment he was doing his thing, his brother was also praying and his brother said, Jesus, the voodoo man and his pot and <laughs> like damba shatala dosi. Things began to happen. The place began to shake. The voodoo man's pot is somewhere. The, the voodoo man can't find his life. His brother is whacked somewhere. An angel appeared in the, from, from the pot like that and said, if you ever want them, that was it. The voodoo man said, leave, leave, go, go, go. They threw him out. And he himself came to share his testimony. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus is above every name. So use it. Is it, it is your access, your master key that you hold in your hand. If you know Jesus, you relate with Jesus, you can't stop mentioning his name. 
If your boss acts rudely to you, Lord Jesus, I commit this situation into your hands. You are doing an application. It is taking too long. Lord Jesus, I pray you will take authority. Do you get it? Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes you don't even have to say too much. Jesus! And change the situation. Jesus! 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 There was a car crash that was going to happen. And while they, they saw the crash happening, it was the two cars were coming together and the Christian sister sitting in. All she did was shout, Jesus! Before she realized she was like, like 40 feet away from the accident. What happened to him? To her? Jesus! Jesus! Don't be afraid to, to use that name. Ungodly people will want to quench your fire. They will want to quench your spirit. They will want to tell you, keep quiet. So that they can continue doing their ungodliness around you. Because there are demons that are controlling their affair. You are a doctor. You enter into the room. You see the sister's leg. You know this one. You mention Jesus' name. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Sometimes I'll be doing my essay. As I've always said, I'm not smart in the head. I don't know the essay. I'm reading the thing I can't even understand. I'll be saying, Lord Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus, help me. Man dorobo shanda. Rataba sonderebe. Rabado shitaradus. And I'll be praying, calling on Jesus' name. Sometimes I will go to, to the extent of submitting the essay. Then the lecturer herself will call me. Ah, this thing you didn't do it well. And teach me how to do it. And send me back to go and do it. And write it. I got grace. Through my education. What do you need God's grace for? Don't be angry and annoyed with people. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Jesus has given you authority. You must use it. Okay? Tell somebody I will use it. Captives are set free in Jesus' name. We see that Paul said, silver and gold, Peter, Silver and gold have I none. That which I have, I give unto thee. Rise and walk. And the man, the, the guy was born with a limp. He was born limp. And before you realize, at the mention of the name of Jesus, he's walking. Glory to God, right? The sick are healed in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, oh, I've, I've said that one. You remember? Demons are also cast out in the name of Jesus. They submit to Jesus. Remember the word of God said, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that which is in heaven, that which is on earth, and under the earth, the three realms. One of these days I'll preach on that. The three realms of life. Jesus has authority over everything in these realms. And so... The word of God says that, listen, Acts chapter 16 verse 18. And this, and this lady, the slave lady had been following the apostle um, Paul going around. So Peter, uh, the apostle Paul turned and said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And the demon left the girl. You see? You can also use the name of Jesus to deal with demons. Demons submit to this name. And the last but not the least, use your kingdom keys in act of obedience. In act of obedience. You remember, um, you remember the, the story of um, Philip. Philip was told by the Holy Spirit, get up and go by the riverside walk on this path and while while he was going he encountered the um, the the U e ethiopian eunuch an african and by ministering to the ethiopian eunuch the gospel was advanced to that side god has a purpose in everything he asks us to do and we must obey him and it is in our obedience that activates god's power 
it is in your obedience that God's authority is activated. His will is being done. God wants this to happen. So if you obey it and you do what God tells you to do, you get the result. God ensures that it happens. That's why he says that I look upon my way to see it fulfilled. He says that nothing that comes out of him shall come, return to him void, shall go out and come back to him void. And so you must learn to obey God. If the Bible says this, that's what I'm doing. And if I believe that God is telling me to do this, that's what I will do. I wouldn't let anyone talk me out of it. And those of you who have people who counsel you, it's not every counselor that you must listen to. If God told you to do it, Satan can even move in the most godly person to tell you don't do it. When the person is not operating in the spirit, they would advise you carnally. That's why the word of God says we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. God bless you. God make his face shine upon you.